Hi there guys and welcome to another video, this is Mr Phillips um, and we're going to move on to enzymes to finish it off our biological molecules module. Um, you have to compete slightly today with the noise of my uh, washing machine uh, in the background which I didn't think about uh, before putting it on, but never mind. Okay, so let's get straight into it then about enzymes. So just to recap what you've done at GCSE um, and hopefully you already are quite familiar with, enzymes obviously have a structure which is a protein, we call them globular proteins, and the particular part of the enzyme that's really important is the active site. That's got a particular shape, a complementary shape um, for the substrate, which is the molecule that the enzymes are going to either uh, change, stick together to make a bigger molecule or break down in digestion. Um, so once the substrate is in the active site, it catalyzes the reaction, so it speeds up the reaction, lowering the rate of activation energy, and that then um, turns it into the products. The products no longer fit the active site, so they get released, and the whole process can continue again. So hopefully that is stuff you know from GCSE. So what do we need to know then? So a little bit more then. Um, so we should hopefully now now look at the protein structure video. If you don't, it's the tertiary structure that gives enzymes their 3D shape. Um, and that particular, those bonds that we've talked about in the tertiary structure, so you've got the ionic bonding, you've got the disulfide bonding, uh, the hydrogen bonding, and the um, hydrophobic, hydrophilic interactions that give them that shape. All enzymes are water-soluble proteins, let me shut my curtain there a bit. Uh, all enzymes are water-soluble proteins, which means that they um, will dissolve in water, they'll attach to water molecules, and they are globular, which means they've got a high 3D shape of process fibrous protein. They act as biological proteins, or biological catalysts, sorry. As we said, they are specific, which we'll talk about as we go on. They're affected by pH and temperature, which I'll talk about um, in the next few lessons. And um, their active site is actually only a very, very small part of the proteins. There's only about a 10, maybe a bit more amino acids. Um, their shape is maintained overall uh, by the tertiary structure. Um, and as you said, well, that obviously involves the primary and secondary structure. And you need to look at your protein stuff if you don't remember that. And their shape is vital and it's very specific. So one enzyme works with one substrate. And if pH and temperature go wrong, then that affects it. Don't really need to know this bit more background, but basically we uh, use enzymes now a lot in industry. So you've got 28% of the detergents are made from enzymes. Uh, sorry, 28% of the enzyme industry is used is in detergents, 35% in food processes, 23% in beverages. Why enzymes are used is because they speed up the rate of reaction, which is the same as a catalyst. They might actually be initially a bit more expensive than a catalyst, but you can reuse them constantly um, and they are more specific. So what that means is you get less unwanted byproducts um, from enzymes than you would from like a metal catalyst. Um, so why is it important? Well, metabolism, which is the sum of all the chemical reactions in an organism or the sum of chemical reactions in a cell, they are driven by enzymes. We've talked about condensation and hydrolysis reactions, but all those need specific enzymes. Respiration, photosynthesis needs enzymes. Um, and one cell can have over a thousand enzymes. So absolutely vital that reactions happen, that enzymes power them. So how do enzymes work then? So this is a graph that you um, have got um, hopefully you've sort of seen sort of before. This is showing something about hydrogen peroxide, which is a, an enzyme we'll probably talk about a few times because it's quite important in our body, um, that we use something called catalase to break down hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is a byproduct that we make in a lot of chemical reactions, but it's toxic. So it says here, how much would the reaction, how would you get in a reaction uh, with a catalyst compared to without a catalyst? Well, actually you get the same amount of product. So if you look at this reaction, You've got the, the reactant there, which you're going to start with, and you've got the, um, the products here, uh, oxygen and water. So you would get the same amount, okay, but catalase, which is made in the liver, um, basically causes the um, reaction to happen quicker. So if you have a look at this, okay, it's because of this activation energy. So you've got the activation energy here. If you didn't have a catalyst, okay, so you need to input a lot of energy in order to get that uh, reaction to happen back. Whereas if you do have a catalyst, the activation energy is much, much less as a result, okay? So again, cat activation energy is, is lowered because the catalyst is an alternative route. A lot of the time the enzymes are providing a surface for the reaction to happen. And obviously they'll be slightly trying to pull apart the, cat uh, the hydro hydrogen peroxide here uh, in the active side of the catalase to make water and 
oxygen. So um, that's really that. So you just need to know that idea. It's still lowering the activation energy. Now, this is really important because if this, if we didn't have enzymes, our bodies would have to find another way of doing this. And actually, doing hydrolysis reactions and breaking enzymes um, molecules apart is actually quite difficult. So if we we're going to do this with a test tube and some acid, you would actually have to uh, add acid, boil to it, heat it up, um, and it would cause use a lot of energy in order to do it. So it shows you that having enzymes in our body drastically lowers the amount of energy that is needed okay so just remind then activation energy is lowered by enzymes and that's it for this one a very short one uh, but we'll continue next time looking at how the structure and the um, active sites and the um, lock and key theory etc